everyone. Thanks for joining me today for another virtual team safety meeting and your final defensive diving training for the 2020-2021 school year. Yay, you can do it. All right, sit back, relax, uh, grab your popcorn and watch the show. All right, so welcome to the summer team safety meeting. Hello, summer. Uh, from the spring team safety meeting, I'd like to congratulate the high achievers for a perfect score. Sylvia, Diane, Barbara, Melissa, Bant, Gertram, Chad, Anne-Marie, Terry, Evelina, Jim, Doug, Val, Lorraine, Lynn, Susan, Peter V, Guy, and Jack. Way to go, guys. All right, so our defensive driving topics for today are railroad crossings, bus evacuation, emergency training, and accident training. So we'll start with the railroad crossings. Railroad crossing procedures are one of the most important safety issues for school bus drivers. Although it is one of the safest vehicles on the highway, a school bus does not have a chance when involved in a collision with a train. Because of its size and weight, a train cannot stop quickly. A train hitting a school bus is one of the worst accidents imaginable. Follow the safe practices and reduce this risk to almost zero. Stop at every crossing, every time, and only cross when you know it is clear to do so. All right, so we'll start with the railroad crossings video here. I'm not sure where my media player is. Okay, here we go. Our school bus safety topic for today is railroad crossing. Did you know that a train traveling 60 miles an hour takes more than a mile and a half to stop? For someone operating a train, the average distance they can see ahead of them is less than a half mile. So by the time they see you, it's too late to stop. When a train hits a bus, it has about the same overwhelming power as that same bus hitting a soda can. The consequences of a train colliding with a school bus full of children is too horrific to even imagine. So being safe around railroad crossings is literally a matter of life or death. In this program, we'll talk about what you need to know to safely take a school bus full of children across railroad tracks. Before we begin, discuss how you think a school bus driver should safely cross the track. Okay, I'll just skip that. We're going to teach you seven steps to safely crossing railroad tracks. First, be prepared to stop. Second, quiet the bus. Third, always stop between 15 and 50 feet in front of every railroad track. Fourth, look and listen. Fifth, look ahead. Sixth, double check. And seventh, cross completely. Let's take each step one by one. The first step is preparing to stop. When you see the advanced warning sign on the road, that's your signal to start slowing down and preparing to stop. Let other motorists know you're stopping by tapping on the brakes and turning on your hazard lights. The second step is to quiet the bus. Turn off the radio and the fans. Let the kids know you need quiet by flashing the dome lights or by making an announcement. It helps if you establish a railroad crossing procedure with the students at the beginning of the school year. The third step is to stop the bus. School bus operators are required to stop at all rail crossings. That means that regardless of whether or not your bus is loaded with students or whether you're at a controlled or uncontrolled crossing, you must stop the bus every time. Be sure to stop no less than 15 feet and no more than 50 feet from the tracks or at the stop line. The fourth step is to look and listen. Open the driver's side window and service door to see and hear better. Look as far down the tracks as you can in both directions. If you see or hear a train approaching, wait for the train to pass. 
Apply your parking brake while waiting so that you won't move or be shoved onto the path of the train if struck from behind. Your eyes can play tricks on you when it comes to trains on railroad tracks. Our limited depth perception at greater distances makes it easy to misjudge the speed and distance of a large train. Even though it may look like it's moving slowly, it could be moving at a deadly speed. Never, ever try to beat a train over the tracks. The fifth step is to look ahead. School buses are 40 feet long or longer, so be sure you have plenty of room to clear the tracks. For instance, you may need to wait until traffic pulls forward or wait for a nearby traffic light to turn green. Never, I repeat, never drive onto the track unless there is at least enough space for two bus lanes beyond the tracks. Even when traffic seems to be moving smoothly, don't make a move until the two bus lane clearance is reached. The sixth step is to double check. Look down the tracks in both directions again, right before you cross to be sure there is still no train coming. You may need to rock and roll in your seat as you look. That way you can see around objects that may be obstructing your view such as your mirrors or the railroad crossing sign. The seventh step is to cross completely. If you're driving a manual shift, do not shift gears and risk stalling on the tracks. If you must stop beyond the crossing, be sure to leave at least 15 feet between the back of the bus and the tracks. Remember, a train's overhang is at least three feet wider than the tracks. So before you go anywhere, you should know the length of your bus like the back of your hand. If necessary, you can use your backing reference point to judge where the rear of your bus is in relation to the track. As a school bus driver, you are entrusted with the lives of children. Before driving a busload of kids, be sure you know your route. If possible, choose a route that avoids railroad crossings altogether. But that's not always possible. Where there are crossings, have an evacuation plan in place in case the bus ever gets stuck on the tracks. Occasionally, you'll approach a crossing where the gate or lights are malfunctioning or the view down the track is obstructed by brush, trees or poorly planned construction. In these instances, each crossing should have an identification number and an emergency notification number listed nearby so you can call and notify the proper authorities. If at all possible, avoid crossing multiple tracks on your route. However, you may need to cross them when transporting children to sporting events or on field trips. Always remember that the train you see on the track in front of you may be blocking the view of another Pay careful attention to the other tracks and make sure that they are clear too. And done to prevent the accident from occurring. Occurring. In this first case, the driver stopped, looked, and listened but then a student came up and asked him a question, distracting him momentarily. The driver proceeded to cross the tracks and the bus collided with an oncoming train. What could have been done to prevent this accident? In this second case, the driver had been driving the same route for years, always crossing the same tracks and never once seeing a train. She assumed the track was inactive and grew careless about safety when crossing. One day, when running late, she didn't even bother to stop and look both ways. Sure enough, her bus collided with an oncoming train. What could have been done to prevent this accident? In this third case, there was a traffic light a few hundred feet beyond the track, and the light was red. Cars were backed up, and when the school bus crossed the track and stopped behind the cars, it still had four feet of the bus overhanging the track. The train hit the rear of the bus at full speed and seven children were killed. What could have been done to prevent this accident? 
Now let's briefly review the seven steps to safety at crossings. The moment you see the advanced warning sign, begin to slow down, alerting other motorists by tapping your brakes and putting on your hazards. Quiet the bus by flashing the dome lights or making an announcement. Stop between 15 and 50 feet from the tracks. Open your window and service door and look down the tracks in both directions as you listen for a train. Look ahead to be sure there is room for your entire bus to clear the tracks. Double check by looking up and down the tracks again. And finally, cross the tracks completely without switching gears and without stopping until you've put at least 15 feet between the rear of the bus and the track. Those are the seven steps to safely crossing railroad tracks. But before you try them with a busload of children, be sure you know about the crossings on your route. Check for anything that may obstruct your view of the track. Keep alert for malfunctioning crossing gates or lights and plan an evacuation strategy in case your bus ever gets stuck on the track. We've gone over a lot of information on railroad crossings, but now we're going to boil it down to something simple and easy to remember. When you're approaching railroad tracks, always expect a train. It's as simple as that. No matter what time of day or night, whether your bus is full or empty, whether the gates are up or down, treat every crossing as if there is a train coming. Always expect a train. Thank you for your participation in today's safety course. And remember, as a school bus driver, your community has entrusted you with the lives of their children. You must take every precaution to protect them. All right, so back to our PowerPoint here. Okay, so see tracks, think train. All right, so you can read the Railroad Crossings training sheet that'll be attached to the team safety meeting email. Uh, we just watched the video and then answer the Railroad Crossing quiz, um, again, attached to the team safety meeting email. There's the information sheet and there's the quiz sheet. All right, so bus evacuations. Okay, sorry, you might have missed the railroad crossings information sheet and the railroad crossings quiz sheet. Okay, so bus evacuations. <clears throat> we all hope you never have to use emergency procedures, but it's extremely important that you're familiar with them, just in case. If there is an emergency on the bus, the students will look to you to be the expert and tell them exactly what to do. It's that moment that we're going to prepare you for now. You have to stay calm. When you're calm, you're perceived as being in control and the students will listen to you without debate. Act authoritatively so there's no confusion. Being able to think quickly in emergency situations. So safety first, so you last. All right, so um, you can read the um, imp emergency information. We're going to watch the video and then answer the quiz questions. Again, attached to a summer team safety meeting email and then update the van evacuation form. Okay. are something we rarely talk about, perhaps because they're so rare, and that's a good thing. But it's important to be prepared for emergencies, and that's the topic of this course. During an emergency, time is precious, and you may only have a few seconds to make some very critical decisions. With that in mind, it's extremely important to know what to do before 
an emergency occurs. That way, if something does happen, you'll be prepared to take action. One of your first actions may be to evacuate the bus. To ensure the safety of the children on your bus, you need to have a well-rehearsed emergency evacuation plan in place, and then hope you'll never have to use it. Emergency. Well, if your bus breaks down or you have a minor collision, the students should remain on the bus. In fact, in most situations, they're far safer inside the bus rather than outside. However, there are three reasons to evacuate the bus. First, if the bus is on fire or you see smoke. Secondly, if the bus is in water or in danger of going in the water. And finally, if the bus is in a dangerous position on the roadway where it could be struck by another vehicle or tip over. In the event of a fire or the danger of fire, the bus should be stopped and evacuated immediately. Students should be taken at least 100 feet away from the bus and stay there until you instruct them otherwise. Remember to count the students as they exit the vehicle. Once they're all assembled in a safe place, count them again. Anytime the bus is in an unsafe position or when the danger to the children is clearly greater inside the bus rather than outside, it should be evacuated. For example, maybe you broke down in the middle of the road along a blind curve, or perhaps you stalled over railroad tracks. Sometimes, even if you've pulled off the road, the actual position of the bus may still be too dangerous to leave the children on board. For example, let's say you pull off the road because the engine is stalled, but you end up on a soft shoulder or dangerously close to a steep drop-off or water. Your primary concern is always the safety of the children. In the event of an emergency, take every step to keep the students safe. And always remember to count the students to be sure you haven't forgotten them yet. It's vital that you know how to evacuate your students in the event of an emergency. There are several ways to evacuate a bus. Everyone exits through the front door, everyone exits through the emergency door, or the front half of the bus exits through the front door, and the rear half of the bus exits through the emergency door. At the beginning of each school year, long before you actually have an emergency situation, you should select two or more students as helpers who can assist you during an evacuation. Take care to choose students who appear to be responsible and confident. Oh, and that reminds me, your school district may already have an evacuation plan in place. So let's stop now and discuss local evacuation plans. Action evacuate children from the front of the bus or the back or both is going to depend on the situation. So let's start with the front door evacuation. First, stop the bus. Then put the gear shift in park, set the parking brake, turn off the engine, and remove the key. All right, we're gonna evacuate the bus. Two rows here, come on, let's go. Keep your stuff on the bus, there you go. Next two seats, very good. Very good, we just stopped. Now we're gonna evacuate the bus. All right. Let's take a look at that again. There's a few things I want you to notice. This is important. The driver in this situation remained calm. Don't make a bad situation worse by getting too excited. Next, notice how the driver stands behind the first set of occupied seats and turns to face the front of the bus. He indicates to the passengers to walk, not run, and to use the handrail. While evacuating the students, he continues to count them. He does this all the way to the rear of the bus evacuating the students in an orderly, safe manner. When the last seat is empty, he walks to the front of the bus, 
checking to be sure that everyone is out of the bus. After he leaves the bus and meets the students 100 feet away from the site, he counts them again to make sure they're all there. They remain there until it's determined that it's safe to move. Let's stop now and discuss any questions you might have about evacuating students through the front door. It's through the emergency door, follow the same procedure for a front door evacuation. The only difference is that you'll begin at the rear and work forward. First, stop the bus with the bus in park or neutral, depending on the type of transmission, and set the parking door. Turn off the engine and remove the key. Advise the bus captains or designated students to carefully exit the bus first, and then guide passengers to a safe place. Count the students while you're evacuating them. Stand between the last set of occupied seats and turn to face the rear of the bus. Indicate to the passengers to walk, not run, and exit out the emergency door. Have the captains or designated helpers stand outside the door, taking passengers by the hands and elbows to help them down to the ground. Continue all the way to the front of the bus, evacuating the students one seat at a time in an orderly safe manner. When the last seat is empty, walk to the rear of the bus, checking below and between the seats to be sure everyone is off the bus. Then exit through the rear door. Make sure the students are at least 100 feet away and remain there until you determine it's safe to move. Take a head count to be sure all the students are there. Stop now and discuss any questions you might have about evacuating students through the emergency door. If you drive a special education If you drive a special education vehicle, or even if you're driving a regular school bus, but happen to have a special needs child on board, you may need to carry students out and away from the bus. To avoid injuring yourself, follow these rules for lifting. Get a firm footing. Keep your feet apart for a stable base and point your toes out. Bend your knees. Don't bend at the waist. This puts pressure on your spine and discs. Tighten your stomach muscles. These muscles support your spine when you lift, offsetting the force of lifting the student. Keep the student close. The closer the student is to your spine, the less force it exerts on your back. Lift with your legs. Let your leg muscles do the work of lifting, not your weaker back muscles. Keep your back upright. Don't add the weight of your body to the weight of the student. And don't twist your body when holding the student. This can lead to an injury. Instead, allow your feet to pivot. These lifting rules can be used at all times, not just during an emergency. Stop now to discuss any questions you may have about lifting a student and any specific rules in your state that you must be aware of when transporting special needs children. We've covered front door evacuations and emergency door evacuations, but you may encounter an emergency situation where time is of the essence and you need to evacuate the bus from both ends. An example would be if your bus stalls on a railroad track and a train is coming. In these extreme cases, begin by following the same procedures for securing the bus. Next, have your helpers open the emergency door and help with the evacuation of the rear half of the bus while you evacuate the front. As you move from row to row, make sure there are no stragglers. Then when you reach the middle, the students behind you should have already exited and you can quickly check the remaining seats before you yourself exit through the back. Now, the procedures we just reviewed are meant to familiarize you with the general guidelines. After all, no two emergency situations are the same. For example, you may be involved in a major accident or even have to evacuate an overturned bus. But remember, you are responsible for the safety of your students. 
Worse yet, you too could be injured or in need of assistance. That's why you have to have regular student leaders available who know how to turn off the ignition switch, set the emergency brake, summon help, open and close doors, help small children off the bus, and use flags and flares. It all begins with preparation. You should hold emergency drills at least twice a year, depending on your state's requirements. Before we leave, let's recap the most important issues regarding emergency evacuations. The primary concern is the safety of the passengers. If there is no threat to the passengers on the bus, they should stay on the bus. Always stay calm and direct the students clearly and calmly. Practice emergency drills at least twice a year. In an emergency, being prepared and having a plan in place is a crucial first step towards securing the safety of the children in your charge. So be prepared, be calm, take action, and stay safe. <laughs> All right, back to our PowerPoint here. Bring up our slideshow. All right, so there's the emergency evacuation information sheet that you can read and the quiz will follow. And then if you need to update the van evacuation form. All right, on to emergency training. The majority of Canada is at risk for severe weather, which can cause dangerous and sometimes life-threatening conditions. Tornadoes, hurricane force winds, torrential rains, flooding, and lightning can all wreak havoc on our daily bus schedules. Preparing before a disaster strikes and knowing what to do during and after a storm will help ensure you and your students greatly reduce your risk for injury and damage to your vehicle. All right, stay alert, stay safe. All right, so you can read the CAMPO Emergency Procedure Extreme Weather Information Sheet. Um, and it's for the emergency qu training quiz all attached to the summer team safety meeting email or copies are available in the office. And there's the emergency training sheet, reading sheet and the emergency training quiz. All right, on to accident training. We hope it never happens, but on occasion it does. The event that you find yourself involved in an accident with the school bus the procedure that you need to follow is very specific. The legal stakes are much higher and the procedure is much more structured than it is for a car accident. To protect yourself, it's critical that you act like the professional you are in these situations. Safety is the key to accident free. All right, so there's gonna be some reading, we're gonna watch a video and then you can answer the questions. All right. So we'll go back to our uh, videos here. Play our post accident procedures video. Wow, being involved in an accident is so stressful. But as a school bus driver, the anxiety we feel is worsened by our sense of responsibility to transport the children safely. We may find that we're flooded with very different emotions. Concern, of course, about everyone's safety and any damage to the bus, but also anger at the other driver and fear about what impact the accident's gonna have on our driving record and our job. All these feelings make it very hard to think clearly and respond appropriately. Oh, and if there are injuries, the stress level goes through the roof just when a clear head and decisive actions are the most important. A school bus driver's number one priority is safety, and this program is designed to make you aware of post-accident procedures. By taking the proper steps, you can help ensure your safety and the safety of your passengers in an accident situation. Today, we're going to teach you those essential steps. If you're involved in an accident, is to focus on the immediate safety of the passengers and yourself. If there's any immediate risk, evacuate the bus. 
reasons to evacuate the bus are if the bus is on fire or a fire is suspected, if the bus is in the water or in danger of going in the water, or if the bus is in a dangerous position in the roadway where it could be struck by another vehicle or tip over. If any of these conditions exist, evacuate the students as quickly as possible to a safe place. Students should leave belongings behind and must not be permitted to re-enter the vehicle for any reason until the emergency is over. Before leaving the vehicle, make one final check for stragglers. After the children have been evacuated, it's your job to ensure they're all accounted for. Once you're all safe outside of the bus, keep all of the children together and far enough out of harm's way of the bus or other motorists until help arrives. A minimum of 100 feet is recommended. Keep the children calm by talking to them and explaining what's happened. Tell them help will be along shortly and praise them for their cooperation in a safe evacuation. If the bus does need to be evacuated, then you should secure the vehicle and your passengers. If the bus can be moved and it makes sense to do so, move it to the side of the road immediately. If the bus is not badly damaged and is in no danger of being struck by other vehicles, keep the children on the bus. Children are actually safer if left on the bus in most situations. Quickly check for any injuries. Ask your passengers if everyone is okay. Don't ask if anyone is hurt. This may scare the children. Even though this is an accident situation, you want to remain positive and stay calm. If you're calm, your passengers will remain calm. After the bus is secured, set out warning devices. These devices warn other motorists to proceed with caution, which will help prevent additional accidents. Now we're going to give you some practice in assessing the situation. A few scenarios will be presented to you. Your job is to identify the steps you would take to secure the bus and your passengers. Once you've determined if there are any injuries and the extent of damage to the bus, use your radio to call your dispatcher. If you don't have a radio, use your cell phone or ask someone at the scene to call. Give the dispatcher the following information. Bus number, route number, school, location, number of students on board, Information about student injuries. If an ambulance is required. If the police have been called. If the bus can be driven. If you will need backup to transport the children to school. Dispatch will contact the police and an ambulance if they've not already been called. After you have secured the bus and your passengers and have contacted dispatch, you will need to exchange information with the other parties involved in the accident. However, in this situation, less is more. The less you say to the other drivers and bystanders involved, the better. You see, an accident is an emotional time and anything you say has the potential of being used against you and the district. So. 
regardless of the details or the cause of the accident, do not admit liability to anyone. It's in our nature to feel apologetic when an accident happens, and it's good to feel sad. But by saying you're sorry, you could be admitting guilt and leaving yourself wide open to liability. Only give factual information about the accident to the police and your management. At the scene, refrain from talking to anyone about the accident other than to exchange the following information. The other driver's name and address, their license plate number, their phone number, the type of vehicle they were driving, the number of occupants in their car, their insurance details, including insurer and policy number, and the names and addresses of witnesses to the accident. Other information that you need to gather is on the accident report form. There should be a copy of this in the vehicle. Part of the form is a student list. Be sure you complete this list. It's important. You should complete the form as thoroughly as possible at the scene while the information is fresh in your mind. When you return to your facility, you'll probably be asked to complete other required paperwork. Remember, only give accident facts to police and your management. Today, you've learned the steps you need to take in the event you're involved in an accident. We hope you're never in this situation, but if you are, remember, first, secure your vehicle and your passengers. This requires you to check for injuries, decide whether to move the bus, and whether or not to evacuate the children. You should also set out warning devices for other drivers. Next, use your radio to call dispatch. If you don't have a radio, ask someone from the scene to call for you. Lastly, do not discuss the accident with anyone other than the police and your school district officials. And when you do, give only the accident facts. Don't speculate about what you think happened and don't accept or place blame. At an accident scene, as always, the student's safety is our top priority. Thank you very much for your commitment to safety. All right, back to our slideshow. So there's the post-accident procedures information sheet, uh, the post-accident procedures quiz, Thank you for your commitment to safety. You are all super special bus drivers. Enjoy the summer, stay safe, stay alive, and go Team Campo!